Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so my name is Zhu Jian Xu, and today I'm going to talk about our latest work, a heuristic for periodic memory allocation with little fragmentation to train neural networks. So first of all, I'd like to talk the overview of our research. So in today's uh, training of neural networks, uh, it consumes a lot of memory as talked uh, in the today's keynote. Uh, and uh, there are a lot of memory optimizations. And when memory, memory uh, allocation is highly optimized, the PyTorch casting allocator, which is used uh, as the default uh, memory allocator in PyTorch, uh, consumes extra 29.5% uh, on average space uh, due to fragmentation. Uh, so memory is not fully utilized. So we took this, uh, cope with this problem, we designed a new heuristic for defragmentation in periodic memory allocation, and especially targeting neural network training. And with our, uh, instead of using the online uh, allocation algorithm in the PyTorch allocator, we designed an offline allocator, uh, which can utilize the uh, memory more efficient way and just with 0.4% fragmentation. And I'd like to uh, introduce the background first uh, and why memory fragmentation is becoming more severe in training neural networks. So uh, when doing the inference uh, for your neural networks, usually the memory is not a big problem uh, uh, in terms of the memory consumption. Uh, because in the inference graph, the computation graph only consists of the forward pass and the intermediate, with, uh, intermediate values between the layers can be freed once the layer is completed. However, in the training, uh, the intermediate value of the forward pass are still needed for the back propagation. So uh, when computing the forward pass, we need to store all of the intermediate results and uh, we have to peak at the uh, beginning of the back propagation. Uh, so uh, memory optimization is very important here to, uh, for training large models or training uh, models with large batch sizes. And one of the common ways to uh, cope with this problem is called recomputation. And in recomputation, uh, instead of uh, keeping large tensors on memory for a long time, we just discard them and recompute them uh, from smaller inputs when needed. So for in this example, uh, instead of keeping the red tensors in the left figure, uh, we uh, rematerialized rematerial, re it uh, as the green values uh, during the back propagation. So by this optimization, the number of computing nodes is increased, so the computation time takes longer, but the peak memory is decreased. And uh, th there are a number of uh, recomputation solvers studies recently, and uh, the recomputation is shown to be very strong optimization. So uh, the top figure uh, denotes the uh, load size against the runtime progress in the training of uh, vision transformer model. So in the forward process, the memory consumption increases, and in the back, back propagation, it decreases. And the memory consumption is unimodal, and uh, PyTorch caching allocator works very well. It can cache almost all of the uh, allocation and uh, runs without uh, allocation overhead. However, uh, when recomputation is applied, uh, the peak memory is reduced like by 90%. However, uh, the resulting allocation pattern becomes much more complex uh, and the uh, load size fluctuates near the peak and uh, this complex, complex memory footprint uh, produces fragmentation. So uh, why defragmentation is important? Uh, of course, uh, the, uh, well, we cannot fully utilize the resource. And uh, actually, PyTorch casting allocator provides some methods to cope with this problem uh, by uh, 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 managing their cache blocks uh, in an online way. However, uh, 
uh, when doing this kind of online uh, management, uh, it involves many calls of CUDA malloc or CUDA free during the runtime, and it degrades this through training throughput, uh, sometimes even by 50%. Uh, so next, I'd like to talk about our approach for defragmentation. I, I'm going to state our program formulation and algorithm. So uh, our approach is offline memory planning. Uh, this is because uh, in the training of your neural networks, memory allocations have a specific pattern and the pattern is repeated. Uh, so the overall uh, a process of the training uh, allocation can be illustrated as like this. So at the first, they have pre-process, like uh, the allocation of uh, weights. And when the training loop starts, they repeat exactly the same uh, allocation patterns, especially when the uh, shapes of the input are fixed. And after the training iteration, it has post-process uh, such as the releases. And uh, usually the bottlenecks are the training iteration, so we focused these, uh, we, we focused these training iteration to optimize. So uh, our allocator works like this. In the first iteration, uh, it uh, trace allocations while allowing slow allocation like uh, Maroc managed. And once we obtain the whole allocation history, then we use the allocation history to uh, compute optimal address assignment uh, for all of the allocations. And from the second iteration, we use the optimized allocation uh, that uh, has almost no fragmentation. So now our problem uh, can be simplified as this. Uh, actually, the problem is uh, uh, called uh, dynamic storage allocation and it is widely studied in, in this field. Uh, so in the uh, dynamic storage allocation problem or DSA problem, uh, given allocations, our task is to find uh, the minimum address space range that can fit all of the allocation requests. So this problem can be reinterpreted as a special case of two dimensional bin packing problem where each rectangle is uh, allowed only to move uh, vertically uh, so in this figure, the vertical axis represents the address space and the horizontal uh, axis is time axis. So each rectangle is allocation. It has fixed starting time and fixed end time, but its address range can be, well, uh, determined by allocator, so it can be moved vertically. And uh, two rectangles must not be overlapped uh, because uh, two allocation must not share the uh, physical storage. Uh, to solve the uh, DSA problem, we introduce a new notion called topological ordering, which determines address assignment. Uh, so given the topological ordering, a topological ordering is an ordering among rectangles. Uh, so for example, in the left figure, the topological ordering among rectangles is D, C, A, E, B. And we determine the address assignment such that first we place D to the lowest position and then place C to the lowest position, then place A, E, B. So topological ordering determines the address assignment. And in the right uh, example, now the topological ordering is A, B, C, D. So we first place A, then place B, place C. So A is placed under D because uh, A has smaller topological ordering than D. So the DSA problem can be rephrased to the problem of finding the best topological ordering among rectangles such that the address space is minimized. So uh, one idea uh, to solve this problem is a naive simulated annealing. So in this naive simulated annealing, uh, we first uh, initialize uh, uh, a, top a topological ordering uh, such as D, C, A, E, B, and in each iteration, we slightly change the topological ordering like to a D, C, A, B, E, and uh, in each step uh, with the new topological ordering, we evaluate uh, the memory assignment, and if the address range size is minimized, then we update 
the current topological ring. Uh, if it's, it's not minimized, we still probabilistically update uh, the topological ordering to avoid uh, converging to the local minima. However, uh, such naive uh, simulated annealing is slow uh, because it takes uh, order n log n time uh, for the memory evaluation of a single candidate. Uh, so I, I'm going to explain why it takes order n log n. Uh, so in given a topological ordering, uh, we uh, compute the address assignment for each rectangle in that order. And when, uh, well, uh, so uh, when placing a rectangle, the offset, uh, we use a segmentary data structure to uh, man manage the uh, maximum address uh, of that time. So when uh, placing a rectangle, the offset can be computed as the uh, maximum address size uh, between the range of the starting time of that a rectangle and the end time of that rectangle. And uh, when the rectangle is placed, we have to update the maximum address uh, size as the uh, offset plus the height of the rectangle. So uh, segment three data structure can uh, handle the range max and the range updates queries in order log n time. So when we repeat this n times, it uh, sums up to order n log n time. So what we want to do is to optimize our algorithm uh, for better convergence. And uh, the idea is to reuse the computation uh, 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 to evaluate multiple topological ordering. So uh, for, from this uh, slide, uh, I, I will use uh, four or five slides to uh, explain the idea of the optimization. And we are going to show that we can evaluate these n topological orders in order n log n time, uh, which means that we can evaluate a single candidate uh, in order log n time. On. Yes. So, uh, so uh, to opt, uh, one of the important observation uh, we use for the optimization is that the reverse topological ordering gives the same address range size as the original topological ordering. So in the left example, um, uh, we place D, C, A, B, E uh, in, in this order that, uh, and, and it's bottom aligned. And, and the reverse order means E, B, A, C, D. And uh, in the right figure, we place E to the top. Uh, so it, it, it's written as top aligned. Uh, so uh, we first place E to the top and place B to the top, then place A to the top place C to the top, place D to, to the top. And uh, these two uh, assignment, assignments uh, give the same address range. And this is the important observation. So uh, this is the original uh, topological order described in the bottom aligned way. And, uh, and this is the uh, topological order described in the top aligned way. And as I explained, uh, for each case, uh, they have the exactly same height, which means the allocation, uh, uh, the use address range size is the same. And this slide is important. And, and uh, actually, we can mix uh, both bottom aligned and top aligned way. Uh, so, the, so the allocation before E is bottom aligned. And when uh, and then we allocate E, then and allocation after E is top aligned. Uh, so e even with this kind of allocation rule, uh, we, we can get the same height if E is on the critical path, which means the uh, peak load size is achieved at some point uh, during the lifetime of E. So. Uh, uh, but by that rule, uh, where we can compute these n, uh, the uh, address range size of these n candidates uh, in n log n time, uh, such as uh, 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 as follows. So, uh, uh, well, we, the height can be computed as the 
uh, maximum height below E, which can be computed uh, using a segment tree, and the height above E can be computed using another segment tree, and uh, the height of uh, E itself. And if E is not in a critical path, then we can simply take, it, uh, take the uh, maximum height among all time. And uh, by taking the maximum of these two candidates, we can get the uh, memory address range for all candidates. So by using uh, the, this uh, optimized mirrored annealing, we can evaluate n uh, candidates at the same time and it enables direct transition to good solution. And I'm going to show some experimental results. So uh, it, uh, we have collected the memory, uh, 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 memory allocation history uh, from famous, uh, uh, the training of famous, mod, uh, famous vision and text models. And the number of allocation is about between uh, 2,000 and uh, 9,000. And we also use uh, three comparator algorithms. One is the online uh, algorithm PyTorch casting allocator, and we use uh, two other offline uh, algorithms, best fit and first fit heuristic. So in uh, this offline variants, uh, uh, unlike the online variant, uh, where we do not process allocation in the requested order, but in the descending order of their sizes. And uh, left figure, in the left figure, the horizontal axis is uh, peak memory consumption divided by peak load size. So this is always greater than one, uh, greater than or equal to one. And uh, if it's greater than one, it means that uh, there is fragmentation. So the colored uh, bars uh, denotes the fragmentation. So uh, when using PyTorch casting allocator, uh, we have a lot of of fragmentation for some mobile net cases, it even have about 50% fragmentation. Uh, and by uh, applying our heuristic, we can uh, remove almost all of the fragmentation. <laughs> and uh, to, uh, it, it, to test our uh, method on a wider range of allocation patterns, we also tested uh, our algorithm on random allocation patterns. And even in the random cases, we observed that our algorithm can uh, nearly uh, completely remove the uh, fragmentation. And we also uh, uh, measured the training throughput. Uh, so in, in the left figure plots the relative training throughput against available GPU memory. So if GPU memory uh, is a fish, uh, the enough, then uh, the PyTorch casting allocator can cache all of the allocations and its uh, training throughput is 100%. However, uh, when the GPU available memory becomes more smaller, uh, uh, PyTorch caching allocator will uh, produce the OOM error even if uh, the uh, peak load size is less than four gigabytes. A PyTorch casting allocator offers some uh, uh, configuration to cope with this situation, as I mentioned previously. Uh, however, uh, when, uh, when, when using uh, that uh, configuration, the training throughput uh, can be degraded uh, to 50%. And uh, by using our offline planning, uh, it, well, we can achieve near full, full memory utilization uh, with maximum throughput. In conclusion, uh, we designed a new heuristic for uh, the DSA problem and it achieved good performance on the uh, training and even random cases. If you have any questions, uh, I'm happy to answer them. Questions? <clears throat> Please come to the mic. Thank you for the interesting talk. Uh, I have uh, actually two questions. Mm -hmm. uh, one is uh, the size of the segment three. How large is it? Uh, so the uh, size of segment three uh, is uh, uh, it, it's the size of number of allocations. 
Uh, so it, 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 it's not uh, very large. For, for example, the number of allocation size is 10,000, uh, 10, then it's the order of the 10,000. Um, another question is that, oh, if I understand correctly, you harvest the uh, allocation pattern in the first iteration mm -hmm. and uh, make, make the optimal alloca allocation strategy yeah. uh, before the second iteration. Correct. So oh, how can you execute the first iteration with a limited size of memory? Oh, that's a very good question. Uh, so in the, in the first uh, iteration, uh, uh, what we, uh, in practice, we can use CUDA Maroc Manage, which can uh, utilize both the GPU and host memory. Uh, so I even if the alloc allocation does not fit in GPU memory due to fragmentation, it can still allocate in the first iteration. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, we're a bit over time, so I'll, I'll halt questions there. Thank you very much. Well, thank you one more time.